In today's video, I put an observation of mine to the test and I realize I'm pretty sure I'm wrong. So I noticed that whenever I was discharging lithium iron phosphate batteries, anytime I would pull the battery off the charger and then immediately start using it to run our living room, the numbers were always a little bit lower, sometimes a lot. And then other times, whenever I let the battery sit around for a day or two, the numbers would be higher. I think after the test I did in this video, I'm pretty well convinced that it's not something to do with the chemical efficiency within the lithium iron phosphate batteries, but instead it happens to be that whenever I'm eager to pull the battery off of the solar panels and immediately start using it, I have, happen to be playing video games and I'm pulling like 300 watts. And so the efficiency is a little bit lower. But whenever I let the battery sit around for a while, I, I'm usually busy and I, I don't have time to play video games. So when I do finally hook them up, I'm usually just watching YouTube videos only pulling 150 watts and the conver conversion efficiency is just that much, a little bit more efficient. And I bet that's where that effect is coming from. It's entirely a human error introduced into the system. But the entire reason is because I don't just want to use the watts created by solar power to run some light bulbs. I want to learn our, run our apartment. And so far we've done 100 kilowatt hours this year. Well, here's the video. Man, guys, yesterday we had 50 mile an hour gusts of wind. It was just insane. But the solar panels held. And as a testament, wherever this came from obviously didn't hold. Look at that. This just appeared from several houses down. It came through that alleyway, which isn't an alleyway. It just rolled and rolled and rolled. So that's, that's kind of fascinating. And uh, so yeah, I find it funny that my panels that are just sitting here, they actually are holding fine, but that's because they're mostly sitting on the ground. Wind does slip through here really fast, but I guess it's just not enough to lift those up, at least not yet. It's been a few weeks and I've just been testing batteries. I've been too busy to actually film anything. And I forgot, Grunner Power sent me this little battery. I had actually put it on the battery cart. I've already done batteries. I forgot I had to do a review of this. So let's just get that charging. This is the other issue too, because we've been having so many cloudy days and low sun days because it's winter. Well, it's, it's taken longer to charge up a battery. With this one though, this follows that trend of even though the cells are balanced, they still have a little bit more capacity with each discharge. For instance, we did the Grinner Power 200 amp hour battery. And although it started out at 2180 watt hours, it went up. I find it interesting that particularly with this time. Whenever I charge the battery, and I'm tripping over batteries here. Whenever I charge the battery, and I immediately take it off the charger, and then I start using it, I get less power than if I let it sit overnight. I find that really interesting. Now, there could be like an issue with how I'm using the power. Maybe, Maybe whenever I take the battery off and start immediately using it, maybe that's a day that I happen to use more power because I'm gaming on it. And a day where it sits around for a day, there's right, and a day where it sits around for a day, it um, maybe that coincides with a day where I'm not doing as much gaming and watching more videos. But I'm still noticing that if I immediately take it off the charge and use it, then I get less power than if I take it off the charge at the same charge level and let it sit for a day and then I use it. So I find that interesting. That goes against what I had understood about lithium ion phosphate batteries. They're, they're proving to be really interesting. I see it's snowing. Just a little bit though. The air temperature and the ground temperature is just, just warm enough for it not to stick. OK, 
Okay, let's see. Well, of course, zero. But earlier I saw that for a few hours it was only pulling five watts, so I think we pretty much topped up. Now, I have a confession to make. Because I told them I'd get it up this Sunday, which is in like 36 hours, I was like, well, the batteries are already half, uh, no, three quarters charged. Right, because I was already using this coupled with another one. So it's already almost charged. I just put it on this charger that I got sent to me by another company. And uh, that helped because it's it was only getting like 20 watts of power. I put about 200 watt hours in there from that. And then I took that off. And then it was just balanced charging for about four hours, three hours, something like that. And that's a good amount of balance charging. I think what's going to get me, though, is if I take this off right now and immediately take it home and start using it, I imagine it might end up being a lower watt hour amount because I didn't let it sit with the electricity in it. I don't know. It just it seems like that it might actually be a thing. Well, let's get this on the cart and let this let's get this thing going home. It's okay. It's very wet out there. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. We're finally home, and I have this project of turning this anchor lithium iron phosphate battery into a variable power supply. Um, let's see, just in case the solar power was way less than I needed, or than I anticipated, let's just see if this takes much power. I'm definitely going to have to modify that um, lithium iron phosphate charger to go a little bit higher in voltage because it already cut off and I think I'd like to go to 14.6 or even 14.7 volts. The voltage is rising pretty quick. It's only after two watt hours being put in for such a large battery. Yeah, this battery is pretty much charged. It's gone up to 14.42 volts with just five watt hours. That makes me feel better at least. Yeah, that current is dropping quite fast. That really is, really is going down fast. It's coming down a little bit slower now as it tapers off. I may change the update speed to about half of this if the other setting does what I think it does. Only been eight watt hours across 16 minutes. We're at about a quarter of an amp or 3.8 watts. At this point, there's no point in looking at the graph. We only put eight and a half watt hours in. It's been 22 minutes. The source is still 15.77 volts, which goes well. And yeah, so I'm just gonna let this thing, I mean, I'm just curious to see how far down it goes because the MPPT charge controller, it always says five watts. I think maybe the charge controller takes five watts. Maybe that's where that comes from. Okay, we're finally under, well, for the moment there, we were under 100 milliamps. I think this thing's pretty much sticking at, uh, it, 
floor is about 100 milliamps. Of course, it'd probably go further if I let it sit for longer, but I think 1.5 watts is pretty good for such a large battery. So now, now we're in, we're in a, uh, we have a prime opportunity to test. Does this, charging a battery and immediately using it, does that lower the amount of output? Let's see. Putting data to an anecdote. watching videos using 150 watts well up to 180 watts i've been converting video and we're up to about 250 watts but that won't be very long man i just edited down almost four hours of video and we've used 50 amp hours but 658 watt hours. That's the most important measurement. And not taking too much power, to be honest. I think this still counts as my standard PC 150, PC roughly 150 watts of power. I'm not rendering the video right now. I'm actually putting the video onto a high speed flash drive and I'm gonna give it to Thice her to render it on her fancy computer because a 7800 X3D with a 3060 is going to be way faster than an i7-4790K with a 2060. I had a long day today. I didn't get to use the computer on the battery more than like an hour or so. I actually did a, a welding class today and my client spent like five hours using the TIG welder. Well now that I'm home, I took a nap and I plan to continue discharging the Grunner Power battery. We're at about, oh, I think 978 watt hours. I can't remember for sure though. Mm -hmm. 1,046 watt hours. I'm pulling a sizable amount, but anytime the power goes down to, or the voltage goes down to 12.5 volts, you can tell you only have maybe 5% or 10% of the battery left. Pretty much down to 12.4 volts while under load. And we're at 1088 watt hours, 1089 watt hours. Shortly later, we're at 12.3. We're at 11 point, uh, uh, 1130 watt hours. Amazing how time flies. We're down to 11.16 volts. We're at 11.92 watt hours. 11.93 watt hours, actually, I should say that. So I'm out of the game and I'm pulling 100 watts. It's at 12, at 10.5 volts. Pretty soon it'll start beeping and I'll have to turn it off. And I'm not going to rate this as my PC 150 standard because I did use a little more power sometimes. We're at 1219 before we reach 1220, which is still really good. So what does this tell us? Well, it tells us, oh. So what it tells us, or at least one data point to tell us is that if you immediately take it off the charge and start using it, it doesn't seem like it by itself or that by itself lowers the amount of power coming out of it. But I do suspect whenever I take the battery right off the charger, that it also happens to coincide with a day where I'm, I tend to use more power like today, where I didn't reach my PC 150 watt standard power usage. If I was just playing Minecraft and watching YouTube videos, then that'd be PC 150. But with this, I was using 200, 245 watts. And I went a little bit above that. So I think it happens just to coincide with something that I do, where whenever I'm eager to use the battery, I'm also eager to use a little bit, little bit more power. 
And despite that, we still reached 1220 watt hours. I don't know where my, I don't know where the pen is. Why did I put the comma there? There we go. Done with the discharge. I'm gonna do two more discharges before my big video. And I also got the last battery I'm gonna review in the mail. Sorry, I, uh, I stopped filming because I, I didn't want, um, there was somebody coming by with a, with a uh, wheelchair. I didn't want to make them feel awkward like I was filming. But I am happy with this battery. I feel like it's definitely on the, of the top tier. The, this is, this manufacturer makes it under different brands and they all seem to be pretty good, pretty similar styles. And uh, the, the real difference would just be the price. Now, I don't like how Grinner Power comes with just hex bolts for terminals. I'd like how the other brands come with screw terminals, but the average person isn't going to be undoing them several times a day like I do. And, you know, it's interesting. I only have two batteries with a, with a flip top handle like this, but I actually do like it. I do wonder how they're going to hold up in the future, but I presume they'll probably be okay. Oh, hey, the other brand's battery is done charging. So another cycle can continue. Well, that's pretty much it, actually. Just a quick discharge test. And I uh, only have one more of these small batteries to do. Then one more of the big batteries. And then I'm hoping to do a big video it looks like now it'll be in 2025, but that works out. It'll be uh, 100 amp hour battery reviews, like 13 brands tested, I think. I can't remember. And then like six brands for the 200 amp hour batteries. And that'll be a nice comparison video so I can show all the little bits and tidbits that I've noticed. And we can look at the price comparison of dollars per watt because that's what's most important. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you very much Gunner Power for sending me another one of these. I'm, I'm hoping to build myself a power plant pretty much. Thank you very much for watching. Have a happy slow Sunday. See ya.